Eric. Yes. My gosh, we finally meet. <laughs> um, Eric, to me, is a real homeless advocate because you're writing on change.org and other places and Facebook and where are you living now? Uh, I'm actually living at, at CCNV Shelter. That is the Community for Creative Nonviolence that was, cre that was created in 1988 by some ho homeless people who, who were actually against the Vietnam War. And the, the, the organization, uh, CCNV, actually began in 1970 at, at, at the soup kitchen. And then, and then they began to add on and they, they, they began uh, a health clinic and, and some other homeless services, case management, and then they began the shelter in 1988. Wow. And th that, that, that's where I'm staying. And that building has three separate shelters in it. And their, their combined uh, numbers it is 1,350 homeless people in, in that one building. No way. And, and the, the awkward thing about it is that the, the building is right across the road from the, from the U.S. Department of Labor. Ha! And I, I, I actually did a blog post and, and a newspaper article about it some time ago where, where I, I pointed out how awkward it was that the Department of Labor would not come across the road and ask those people how they can be helped and how they can be gotten jobs, you know. And, and the, the funny thing about it is, is that on March 5th of 2009, Michelle Obama visited the homeless at Miriam's Kitchen right. at, at 24th and G Northwest here in D.C. And it all exploded because of that one picture, too. Right, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah so, so that, that, that one homeless guy had a, had a camera phone and took a picture of Michelle Obama. Someone got his picture, and then they said, homeless guy with a camera phone, why can't he pay rent? Right. Well, words, words are wise, you know, I pay 60 a month for my cell phone. Rent here in D.C. for a two-bedroom average is fourteen hundred a month. There's there's a big difference between sixty a month and fourteen hundred a month, but folks don't seem to see that. And and and, and then uh, so so anyway, that that picture's still floating around the web. Right. And a guy who worked for the Department of Labor got a hold of it, put it in his work email, which is really idiotic, and, and put an offensive caption under it. And so my my fellow homeless advocate Steve Thomas got a hold of that picture, sent it to his higher ups and said, we don't want the guy fired. What we want is to foster a relationship with you to create a job training program for the homeless. And now that, that's what we're actually working on. Wow, that's great. So, now, I mean, I, I, I've been reading your stuff. I, I love what you write. I mean, you're really knowledgeable about, about what's going on. Mm -hmm. But I thought you were, I didn't know that you were still homeless. Now, how long have you been homeless? Oh, I've been homeless off and on since since 94. I, I, I've actually gotten out of it a few times and fallen back into it. and. You know, so it's got it's got it's been a lot of ups and downs for, for the past 16 years, and and uh, actually, you know, since I've been here in D.C., I've actually become a homeless advocate. For, for my, my first several years being homeless, I actually wasn't advocating, and and then, uh, but for the past past four years, I've been a homeless advocate, and that has actually kept me so busy that I, I actually haven't had an awful lot of time to go out looking for work, and e even if I found work. There are folk here in D.C. who are working full time and can't afford to pay rent. Right. Like, like I said yesterday on 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 the link, uh, I said that here in D.C. the average rent is fourteen hundred a month. They say you shouldn't pay more than one third of your income in rent or mortgage. Right. And so if you do the math, you'd have to make at least twenty five dollars an hour to live here in D.C. The, the the minimum wage here in D.C. is a dollar more than it is nationally. And so here in D.C. it's 825 an hour. So long story short, your employer can pay you less than one-third of what it takes to live here in this city. And so the, the cost of living and, and the cost of rent don't, don't match each other. And so that, that's, that's why many folk are homeless, you know, so that you got folk who, who are working and, and actually can't pay the rent. Let me ask you this, as a, you know, an educated person that's still experiencing homelessness what's the solution is there a solution well first of all I should say that in spite of me being you know or seeming educated I, I actually have never been to college a lot of folks are actually surprised when they find out that I've, I've never been to college and, and uh, so I, I don't really have any credentials beyond having finished high school well, let me rephrase that as a very knowledgeable yeah. homeless man yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I experienced it because I actually respect yeah. that because yeah. I, 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 you know, gosh, I did some college after just because I found a grant, but, you know. Right. So, I, I do, dude. I respect the heck out right. of you. So, uh, is there a solution? Is, is, there, is there a solution? Well, we, we, got, we got to find a way to, to make the cost of living match the 
cost of rent, well, that, that, that's easier said than done. Uh, also, we, we should make housing a, a human right. And, you know, uh, the, the economists can get a bad rap, but I, I got to say this for them, that their, their motto is from each according to his ability to each according to his need. And if we, if we lived by, by that motto, you know, we, we'd have a, a, a much better country. You see, housing should, should not be treated as, as a commodity to be sold to the highest bidder. It, it should be decommodified and, and, and treated as a necessity to be afforded to everyone. You know, and it's been, it's been proven that uh, if, if you house somebody first, that makes them better capable of coping with their other issues, whether it's mental illness or physical illness or drug addiction or whatever the case may be. And even for those who, who just need to get to work, some, some only have work issues. And, and yet, you know, if you're in a shelter, you, you deal with a lot of noise at night, folk talking at night, you know, and, and you can't really function well on the job in many cases. And so even those people right. just need a place to stay first and, and then everything else just fall in line. And so we, we should decommodify housing, we, we should change the paradigm and, and, and treat it as a necessity rather than a commodity and, 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 and take it off the market and just make it something that, that's afforded to everyone. Wow. Now, how, how, how we're going to do that is, you know, as they say, the, the, the devil's in the details. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you had three wishes, what would they be? If I had three wishes? Oh, man. Well, for one, I, I, I wish for a good house, a good wife, and oh man, uh, uh, the third one would probably just be a, a, to, be, to be able to, to, to make a living wage doing what I do, advocating for the homeless. Gosh, I'm with you. Though I just switched my three witches to agree with yours, man. <laughs> Thank you very much for talking to me. All right.